All right, so the next project is going to be uh, building a shelf for our son. Um, kind of an animal themed room, so we like this shelf. You can see it's no longer available. This is on Pottery Barn Kids. I'm gonna try to recreate it. Uh, what I did is kind of took a stab at drawing it out in AutoCAD. Um, I imagine you can do this in Google Sketch or something like that as well. So this is just gonna kind of be a, a rough estimate. So I'm gonna try to take these measurements and uh, I don't know, maybe trace it to uh, to the carport floor or maybe a big sheet of wood and then um, do my best to recreate this. So we'll see how it goes. So I took all those dimensions in AutoCAD and just kind of did, you know, estimates of, of what the lengths are to get a total kind of linear length of all the wood. Um, as you can see, I got to uh, 285 inches total. Uh, so if I do everything 12 inches wide, um, I can cut this out of one four inch by eight, I'm sorry, four foot by eight foot piece of plywood. Uh, so that's my plan. I'm gonna use one sheet of plywood. I'm gonna cut it into 12 inch wide strips. And then once I get my 12 inch strips, then now we'll uh, cut them to length for all these pieces. All right, this is my setup for cutting up plywood. Um, I have a video on how I built that table and I'll put a link uh, from probably last year sometime, but uh, this is what I'll use to cut my plywood down into 12 inch wide strips. I guess there's a little hiccup there where the uh, front edge of the plywood was catching on this lip right here. So I'm gonna try to fix that for the next cut so it doesn't get caught up again. But uh, here's my board I just cut. Um, I'll get my tape measure and see. Make sure it was accurate. So did a good job overall. You know, it's not the best way to do it, but Hey, it works for cutting down big sheets of plywood. Um, so I'll do that uh, two more cuts, then I'll have uh, three strips, maybe maybe three more cuts in case it's a little, uh, a little short. I wanna make sure they're all the same size. All right, I added a couple strips of uh, duct tape. Hopefully that uh, helps that little lip that was catching. All right, not sure what's happening, but it was catching, so I took off uh, this piece and I'll try again. Okay, that went a lot easier, uh, taking off this little piece that goes behind the blade. Uh, I'm an amateur woodworker. I don't know what this is for, but uh, again, easier without it. Okay, it's a rookie mistake here. Uh, I'm sure somebody probably caught this when you were watching this. I didn't. Um, I was cutting these 12 inches wide on the uh, table saw. Forgot to take into account the thickness of the blade. So I've got three boards that are 12 inches wide and then you can see uh, my last one there uh, is not as wide. So I probably should have cut them 11 and a half or 11 and three quarters or something. But hey, I think I only need a bottom three to do the giraffe as I have it planned out. So this should be extra anyways, but uh, you know, something I, I should have probably planned for. All right, so I printed out my dimensions and then I drew it to scale on our patio with a chalk tape measure just to get a feel for how big it'll actually be. There's a dog for reference. So I'd recommend doing this just to get the feel to make sure everything's in the right place and it's how you want it. All right, so this is another thing I did is I went and kind of showed how all the joints were gonna be. Um, this is just kind of a draft. Hopefully this is how it works out. I think this will probably be one of the most difficult joints, but I'll just kind of figure it out as I go. So I went and borrowed my dad's saw because my uh, little 10 inch saw isn't big enough, so I guess we'll start cutting. All right, so there's my first cut. 
That's the uh, you know 54 inch one. So next I'll probably do uh, I guess that 29 inch one on the back of the neck. And so I'm just gonna kind of wing it. I'm gonna uh, cut them and lay them up here and just see how everything fits. Okay, so I'm already strained from uh, from this. I said that piece was 29 inches. I cut it 29. Came over here and it was uh, too short. It's supposed to come up to here. So I just kind of redrew the head to, to match that piece. And so now, I'm just gonna do the back next, which is supposed to be 18. Uh, if you look here, it's actually about, I don't know, 18 and a half. So I'll probably cut it, cut it 19. So I wanna cut these kind of miters as I go. There's a better way of doing this, but uh, hey, here's how I'm doing it. Uh, you know, I want this board to be cut kind of like that so it sits flush on top of the back there so what I'm doing is uh, again I'm sure this isn't the right way to do this but uh, just scooting this sliding that board forward a little bit getting my square and catching the uh, end of the board there it's coming back to the corner here I'm drawing a line and hoping that gets me close we'll see so as you can see, the, uh, the line I do that I'm going to go cut uh, on my table saw. All right, got that cut. Feel pretty good about that angle. Um, I don't want to cut this one because I'm going to have a shelf going from here to here later, tying into the end of this. So um, I'm just kind of eyeballed that. Uh, we'll see how it works. I'll show you my setup. I'm not very proud of it because it's kind of sketchy, but uh, I'll show you what I'm doing to get these angles. All right, so I got my table saw set up with a kind of a piece of wood there, so I'm not up against my gate. I'm just kind of eyeballing uh, my cut. So that first cut was the 27 and a half, basically, degrees. Um, but yeah, I'm just lining up my pieces of wood and, uh, and eyeballing it with the blade and cutting it, so. Worked on that first cut, we'll see if it keeps working or not. So yeah, there's that pencil mark I made and literally I'm just loosening this up and then just trying to, uh, you know, adjust a blade so it lines up with the line there. That looks lined up on that one-ish, it's about 20 degrees. So I'll make sure when I'm not holding the camera, close one eye, line it up and then uh, make the cut, we'll see where it fits. All right, looks kind of close, but uh, you know, we'll find out whenever I put the shelf in if it butts up close enough. You know, probably end up using a good bit of caulk on this project, but um, you know, it is what it is. So I think now I'm just gonna kind of work my way around, uh, cut a piece of length, then eyeball the uh, miter cut, do it on the table saw, and then come put it here, and make sure it fits. So uh, next I'll do this piece, which is gonna be about. Was that four and a half inches? So maybe I'll cut it. I'll cut it four and a half and then do the uh, double miter. Okay, I changed my mind. I'm gonna do a couple of these uh, kind of bigger pieces. You can see I just did this 24 inch uh, stomach piece that spans over the back leg. I'll probably do this piece and that piece and some of these bigger pieces first to try to uh, make the best use out of my, uh, my wood before I start cutting the small little pieces. I was gonna do a cool stop motion picture by picture as these pieces started to come in, but uh, oh well, you have to imagine it. You can see how it's starting to kind of come together there. Um, I think this is looking good. I went ahead and squared off the bottom here, so it's gonna act like the floor, uh, so I can pull measurements for the legs to make sure all of that is as close to perfect as possible. Uh, this will kind of be a critical cut here. Make sure that butts up, butts up to the back piece there, the back leg. And also the tops and the inside legs will be pretty critical with an angle. But um, yep, it's kind of coming together, so I'll keep cutting. Okay, here's another way I just kind of thought up to do this. This is my square, kind of find where this corner is. 
holding my pencil against that uh, that mark, which is about seven eighths. Just drag the square, keep the pencil on seven eighths. And that makes kind of a little parallel line there with the board. So that's how I will cut that angle on that piece. Okay, looks like it came out pretty good. I'm starting to foreshadow this is gonna be a nightmare. Let's <laughs> actually put it all together to keep it square. The big thing is making sure all these uh, shelves, the horizontal shelves are gonna be level. Um, so I, I don't know, I'm gonna have to think of a good way to figure out how to get everything square once I get to that point. But um, keep chugging along for now. So in order to get a nice flush foot, flush fit here the back is tapering down more than I wanted it to uh, so I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna adjust it back where I wanted it kind of higher up there and I'm gonna come back and uh, kind of straighten this up on the table saw real quick so I get to fit better there so I'm just gonna kind of eyeball it something like that and that was a mistake because that screwed up this really nice uh, engagement I had there. So now I'm trying to angle that back. I didn't think that it was going to screw up the uh, contact between these two. So now I got to fix that. All right, here's my latest uh, idea of how to cut these miters. So I want this piece to, uh, you know, bridge the gap between the back leg and the back. So I just kind of cut it roughly to length, put it on top, drew a line here, I drew a line here. And then I went underneath this, drew a line up under there, so that way uh, I should be able to know roughly where to cut everything. I also realized that using the table saw to cut miters uh, up against the fence, you know how I had it kind of pressed up up against close, was a horrible idea. Um, because I'm, you know, cutting off what's against the fence, so I'm not getting good cuts. So uh, for this short piece, I'll use a table saw, but anything that's too big uh, to come the left side, I'm starting to use the, uh, who'd have thought, the miter saw to cut the miters. Uh, so that'll make more sense and hopefully give me better cuts. All right, so to figure out the angles for the, uh, the legs, what I'm doing is, see I've got that squared off there. These legs are where, about where they need to be. So I'm just, uh, already did this one. Putting the leg about where it needs to be. Sam, then I'm putting this piece of wood up to simulate the ground. Here you can see I'm kind of getting it flush with the existing legs. Then I can come and just kind of draw my angle here. I'm going to use that to set the uh, miter saw. But instead of cutting it up here, I'm actually going to cut it just at the very end here and I can trim it to length. That's just to set up the angle. And then after that, I'm literally just bringing it here. I'm uh, just eyeballing kind of what that angle has to be here. It looks about right. And once I have that where I want it, I'll tighten it up. Back here. And then I'm just gonna scoot it over just again. I just wanna take the very edge of it off first. Now that I cut that, I can uh, slide it back under here, buttered up to this piece, like that. And now I'll cut it to length by, uh, again, simulating what the ground's gonna be there. And then I can draw my line here. And it should be the same angle that the saw's already set to. Uh, Looks good. Now I just cut it to length so it's flush there. All right, let's end the day one. We gotta go to dinner at my parents' house, but that's what it looks like so far. So good progress today. So the leg actually goes over here. So starting to get an idea of what it's gonna look like. All right, so it's beginning of day two working on this. Uh, these green lines I added were kind of a uh, actually like squared off and made a little grid just to make sure everything was lining up better and everything still looks okay after I did my chalk line. Uh, the floor is gonna be 
the bottom's gonna be kind of tricky. I'll have to make up for that somehow, but uh, all these joints I think are gonna work. So I'm just gonna do a few more shelf pieces like this piece right here, I think, uh, the vertical piece. And uh, then I need to start thinking about um, the sequence of attaching these together. So I'm gonna use glue and pocket screws uh, with my Craig jig is gonna be my, my goal. So just trying to think through which joints do I do first to allow me to, uh, you know, make sure I can get to everything successfully. So, but hey, for now I'm gonna go with that, that vertical piece next and then uh, maybe I'll start gluing and screwing. So I think instead of doing this uh, next, I'm actually going to, I think, start uh, gluing and screwing some of these together. I don't wanna over constrain everything to where, you know, this doesn't end up fitting, so. I think I'm gonna like connect maybe this neck to back area all together first. See how it sits all glued up and screwed together. Then maybe connect this, 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 and this next. And then once those pieces are, two separate pieces are glued independently, I'll bring it all together and then I'll take my measurement to make sure that whenever I drop this vertical piece in here, it's a, it's a good fit and it's not, you know, over constraining uh, this joint here. So I'm gonna do that. So I'm using the Craig jig uh, to do my pocket holes. I'm gonna drill three holes here. Uh, can't recommend this enough. Uh, this has really kind of made my amateur woodworking a lot easier. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna drill my holes and then uh, this is the back neck and this is the back. I'm gonna screw those together first. Uh, with a little bit of glue. Okay, so I've got that drilled and I was gonna do just kind of a test run. I don't really know how to usually clamp this down when it's 90 degrees to each other. I've never done uh, mitered angled joints. And so when I tried to do it without clamping, it, it pushed and didn't line up how I wanted it to. So I'm gonna try again, but I think I need to figure out a way how to clamp these down so they don't shift. Just wanna show you what, what happened See, when I put this screw in here, it pulled this board back that way, and so it's not flush. See, I want this to be flush here, so that's why it's important to clamp everything down. Uh, so I'm gonna try again with the stuff clamped down. All right, I can't think of an easy way to clamp this down, so I'm just gonna glue it and uh, put a couple finish nails in it first to hold everything in place, and then I'll come back with the, uh, with the screws. And that did not work. <laughs> um, the nails didn't hold. Once I drove these in, it, it scooched it over anyways. Um, I did not reuse this hole. I did the outside ones first and then the center one and it still didn't hold. So, oh well, it is what it is. Okay, so disaster struck yesterday and it rained. So before I had uh, my chalk sketch over there, it's gone. Uh, so I'm just kind of rebuilding uh my giraffe you can see a couple days ago i i numbered all the pieces there and uh i started you can see number nine right there i started numbering the boards so i know where all boards go um if you've noticed by now i'm just kind of winging this project but uh so yeah i'm gonna, just gonna start you know keep keep connecting boards i yesterday before it rained i connected these two there's a pocket hole. So then I'm gonna connect this one next here, up against there, and then uh, gonna keep working my way back around here. And I, it looks like this isn't gonna fit anymore, so I might have to recut some boards, but uh, I'll connect basically the perimeter, I think, and then fill in the inside as needed. Okay, so here's a uh, back of the neck and the back. I'm gonna do this piece next, so. I'm just going to mark where to do my pocket holes and make sure that they don't interfere with these um, existing screws. So, you know, here I'll probably do one, uh, I guess, 
do on the back end, but you know, one here, one here, maybe one here, and I'll transfer them over to uh, the bottom side because that's where I'll do the actual pocket holes. All right, so I got my holes drilled, uh, making sure that the pocket holes are facing down so that you won't see them. Uh, I'm just gonna screw it into here. Again, just kind of eyeballing it, making sure it's center, close to center. Dropping my screw, driving in. Actually, I'm gonna add glue to this first. I almost forgot the glue. There we go. Put some glue down. Okay. Now, I'll screw it in. Using the inch and a quarter uh, Craig screws. Just kind of starting them because they do like to kind of pull the piece around. So. So there's that shelf. Now I'm gonna make sure that this is uh, level, basically, and that's gonna dictate kind of how the other pieces go together. Just kind of poke through here on the top of the back, so I'll probably end up undoing those later and using maybe one inch screws instead of one and a quarter. So at this point, these three are connected here. That's connected, that's connected. And everything else is loose. I don't really feel comfortable doing much more uh, without getting everything squared up, you know, perfectly. So I think I'm gonna get a sheet of wood, lay this down on, and um, and start sketching everything out kind of exactly to make sure it all lines up good. Okay, so a lot's happened since the last uh, video about 30 minutes ago. So I laid down my particle board. What I did is I started screwing down these kind of uh, guides, so I'm almost making a jig. So uh, you know this front leg and front neck is now sturdy in between those pieces of wood. So I just laid the, the wood down and then screwed the boards on either side of it down to kind of sandwich it. It's holding it pretty good. So you can see I've got, you know, that screwed in there. I've got this screwed in there. I've got two on the back, two on the back leg. And everything else is loose right now, but I'm just kind of starting to get a feel for, for everything again. It looks good. Um, I drew some black lines squared off of, of here so i know what my vertical is my horizontal is so you can see that stuff's lining up pretty good so i think it's going well um so i'm just going to keep chugging along but definitely using the board the backboard uh you know sandwiching the pieces and drawing the grid lines with a square is definitely going to help me get everything squared up where i want it to be uh, i think i'm going to have to do some some edits for sure uh, you know, like I'm, I think I'm gonna have to recut that. Get a pretty good little gap there in that angle, and uh, and then maybe take a little bit off the bottom of this foot here, so that I can do a foot plate underneath. I'm thinking to put a a flat piece underneath the bottom here now, from the inside of the back of the back leg, inside of the front of the front leg. Have kind of a flat piece as the bottom of the shelf to, sta to help stabilize everything. So I'll probably end up trimming this a little bit. 
and this one looks okay. So making uh, making progress. I think this is gonna help square things up a lot now. So now I've got this one squared off against the uh, vertical front leg. What I'm doing is coming over here, got a little block of wood that I'm lining up on the back of the outside leg and I just traced the angle there. Now I'll be able to cut this on the saw. If I can line up the saw blade at that, I'll have a nice perfect cut to butt up against here. I'm gonna try that. Okay, so I cut a few more pieces out. I did the legs, the bottom of the legs. Um, and then I went around and started marking. Uh, see those pencil lines there? So one, two, three. Basically did that all on all these different pieces where I'm going to do the uh, pocket holes. So now I'm gonna take this all apart and uh, drill the pocket holes and start screwing this together. My plan is to not attach anything to the front leg yet, but basically get everything else <laughs> one piece. Um, and then I'll move on to doing, you know, a couple of shelves here before I screw the front leg to everything. So here we go. I did adjust my crag before I had it set on the third quarter. And if you remember, it kind of poked through in a couple of places, you know, on the back there. So what I did is I kind of, uh, I lifted this up just a little bit so the holes wouldn't be as deep. And so hopefully that keeps the screws from poking through uh, moving forward. So I just set it to the seven eighth there. I started gluing and screwing and um, I guess my, my fears are coming true. Um, I screwed this to this, this to this, and that to that. And now you can see you know, I'm having issues with everything being square. This does not, I just want to push down on this, doesn't want to come down. When I do push down on that, it wants to pick up here. So this whole thing is kind of tilted this way instead of being flat. So I'm just gonna keep gluing and screwing and, and try to overcome it and correct it and, and pull these together. But uh, we'll see how it ends up. And this might end up being all crooked and, and wonky looking. All right, it's all uh, screwed together. All of this basically screwed together. The let the this and this are not yet, and they all mostly fit back. I had to undo this piece here. And see the back legs off now, and I had to do undo this piece, and so it's it's in a stress state right now. Um, I'm just gonna keep going though, and keep keep trying to pull it straight, and. Uh, We'll find out whenever we take it out of here and stand it up how bad it is. Okay, to give me a little flexibility for the legs, what I did was um, I'm just doing the center screws. I just did the center one here. Uh, down here, just the center here, just the middle. Again, just the middle, just the middle, and just the middle. So that's going to let me kind of twist these around a little bit if I need to. Hopefully that gives me a little bit of flexibility to, to straighten it up once we stand it up. I think the next thing I'm gonna do is attach this to here and then I'll stand it up and we'll see how uh, how bad it looks. Okay, so here it is stood up. Looks okay, I guess. Um, to do this joint, I haven't done it yet. I'm gonna glue, I'm gonna try to glue the this joint and then I'm going to use this uh, speed square to try to get it nice and square and then I'll uh, drill some pilot holes um, and then hopefully uh, do a couple more shelves and then start working on the head. So I got a little piece of one by four I'm just clamping it uh, to the front neck piece and you can see I got it pretty square there and then, uh, same thing on this side pretty square there. Uh, it's sitting inside there, so I just need to shift the shelf this way over a little bit, and then I'm going to do some drill some holes and screw it in. Um, may put a little bit of glue on too, and uh, then keep going. All right, so I got these in. Definitely would have preferred to have pocket screws, um, you know, maybe on the bottom of this somehow. But um, hey, that's what poor planning gets you. So I have to settle with. Uh, with these screws, I did a two and a half inch screws at least. So uh, they should have a pretty good bite into that shelf. 
I think it's gonna be one of the most uh, important structural elements right there, that joint. All right, so there she is uh, to this point. I think it, you know, it's gonna be good enough for a child's room. I'm sure none of these are very level, but you can't tell. You can't tell at the bottom there. You can see uh, the feet are they're definitely not, not square, but um, I'll probably just put a, a faceboard, uh, you know, something on the front here to cover that so you can never see it and uh, should be fine. All right, so now I just gotta do the head and maybe add a couple of shelves here. Keep on going. So I'm finally, uh, again, working on the head today. It's been about a week since I've gotten to work on this, but I'm gonna mix up the, the head from this design. I don't think this is very giraffe realistic. So you can see I've been practicing some sketches and I think I'm gonna end up something like this, so. Um, I'm gonna try to build this. So this is what became of the head. Uh, see it's facing the other way now. It's in our son's room. It's kind of a mock-up to see where to place the final shelves. I'm gonna add, uh, I gotta screw this one in. I think I might add another one there and then add a shelf here. Um, but really the, that'd be pretty easy, the, the shelves down there. Now I just need to focus on the ears and the I don't know what they're called. They're like antlers or something. See that? Ears and little stubs on their head. So uh, that's what I'm trying to sketch up right now to see how I'm going to do that. And uh, I'll let you know what I figure out. All right, here's my sketch of a giraffe ear. I'm going to transfer this onto a piece of MDF, make it about four inches long, and then I'll try to cut it out with a uh, jigsaw and see if that works or not. All right, here's my ear and whoops, there was a nail on the back of that. Um, anyways, I'm gonna, I guess, try to clean this up with some sandpaper, maybe my orbital sander, see if I can smooth out some of these edges. And uh, I think that'll be good enough. So I wanna apologize for not really following the build of the head. Um, I was running out of time on vacation and it was really hectic getting all these angles i was just really just kind of running and gunning trying to uh throw this together as quick as i could and didn't come out great i think there'll be a little bit of caulking and sanding to be done um but it was not very easy um but i did do most of these on my first try and you can tell it's not perfect but um i think it's gonna be okay after do some sanding and stuff um you know just really just eyeballed it the whole time and and just used the saw and was able to get it. But um, hey, here's the ear. Uh, forgot what else. I think we're gonna do it like that, maybe. Yeah, maybe like that. Probably like that. So I'll go cut another one and then uh, we'll figure out a way to attach these. Just a quick tip if you're ever cutting something like this, um, you know, always cut the kind of the outside edges first and leave the piece that's attached to the rest of your wood for the last. That way you know, it stays rigid as you're cutting it. If you start cutting this and it's gonna fall off, you're not gonna be able to cut the rest of this off. So always start with kind of the outside and work your way towards uh, the pieces attached to uh, your bigger work piece. Right, so I got both ears cut out. And for the horns, <laughs> I went to Home Depot and this is the best I could find. Uh, it's actually a door stop, but you know, they want to screw it in here or something like that. Two of them. I think it'll end up looking looking good enough with the ears. So this is the finished giraffe shelf. We've had it um, for over a year now. So you can see it's well, well used, 
full of books. I never ended up painting it, never ended up putting a uh, edging on it, but uh, you can see the ears and the door stops I use for antlers. But uh, it's very functional, looks like a giraffe, holds a lot of books. A little bit of yellow paint would probably make it look a lot better, but um, maybe one day we'll get to it. But it's uh, it served its purpose for uh, for a while now.